Not loud enough? Nothing. How's that? Better? Can everyone hear me? All except Norm. Okay, I might need louder, I guess. Okay. Jeff will turn this volume up so you can all hear me. I've never had that comment much that you can't hear me. But we'll, we'll get louder here in just a second. Welcome to our Citrus Ridge Neighborhood Church. I see some new faces. I see some returning faces. I see some smiley faces. I love it. And I love that. Yes, Jeff's getting me. I'm, I'm getting louder back there from the back row. Let's see here. Okay. A little bit louder. What? <laughs> All right. Is this any better? Are we good? All right. I was just saying that y'all look wonderful to me this morning, and you are welcome in our church family. We are so glad you're here this morning. And before we get started with our service, as we like to do is go over a few of the announcements that we have here for you for the week coming up and going forward. We have our annual memorial service, which is here today at 1 o'clock. And I know Barb and Lynn are coordinating that. Would you two like to say anything more about the service today? No? We're good? <coughs> All right, if you have anything, all right, if you have anything for the memorial table that you would like to share with the congregation, bring it by noon today because they want to have everything set up by noon. So be sure to be there. This is a wonderful um, memory of our friends and our neighbors, our family. So please come. The church committee meeting is going to be tomorrow night. Um, at m Monday, tomorrow night, and it's going to be at 7 o'clock in the activity hall. Again, this is your church. We are a family, so we encourage you. You know, it's like, do you go to family dinner when you're invited? You betcha. So I want to invite you to come to our church committee. You are invited. So please come and join us as we talk about the church and, and how we organize and develop and, and present God's word to our family. Bible study is going to begin on Tuesday, January 10th. Pastor Phil will be coordinating our Bible study, and that will be at 2 o'clock here in the clubhouse. And then on January 23rd, we have our ladies' luncheon. That is always a fun event. That's going to be at 1130 uh, here at the clubhouse on the 23rd, and it's bring primarily a salad, right? Okay, bring a salad, your own um, place settings, or you'll have place settings. The salad is to share, yes. So just don't bring a salad for you to eat. Bring you a salad for everyone to share. And trust me, we have plenty to eat on this event. So please come and share. It's a fun, it's a fun time together. And then on February the 3rd, our church dinner is going to be here in the clubhouse. We will be starting the dinner at 5.30. Uh, the church will um, have the meat the dessert and the drinks, and you will go ahead and bring your place settings and a dish to share. So please be sure to come and join us for the church dinner on February the 3rd, and then following, we have entertainments called the His Songs. Uh, they're a family, and uh, there's a picture of them back there under the church column. So take a look, you will not be disappointed. They're a Southern Gospel group and a wonderful, wonderful church family so please come and join us for that as well a couple other things um, that i was given uh, notice about uh, harold wanted to make sure that we said thank you to all those who came and helped disassemble our nativity scene and bring it back here to the clubhouse uh, you know who you are so thank you so much for doing that and pitching in and helping with that. Make sure that we have the sign-up sheets that are going around for our church attendance and also for the church dinner. I don't, who, where is it now? Where's the sign-up sheet for the church dinner? It's headed this way? Okay, it's made it all this side to so make sure we pass it over on this side and the attendance sheet should be going back this way. So I think we're, we are good for that. The only other thing that I would mention is there is also a sheet in the back uh, for anyone who would like to help us with the teardown of the church dinner. So um, after we're finished with that, so make sure to sign that if you would be willing to stay and help with that. We will be also putting the sign-up sheet. I'm really, be careful with this. We also will have the sign-up sheet over here for the rest of the community. 
to sign up. So after today, we'll be putting that over there on the side for the community to sign up for our church dinner. Let me see, what did I forget? Oh, I think there's an anniversary, a very important one coming up uh, this past week or this coming week. Is that true, Pastor? Oh, uh uh-huh. It was yesterday. How many years? Forty. Got that right, didn't you? Okay, good. (laughs) That's important. Congratulations on your anniversary. Are there any other recognitions we should make today of any anniversaries or any birthdays? We probably should do that. They do that in coffee. Anyone else? All right. All right, let's go ahead and prepare our hearts now to worship. This is the purpose of why we came, to worship and love the one who loves us so. Sharon? Sharon. Oh, isn't it nice to be welcomed anywhere you go? I love going places and you just feel like the people want you there. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Well, we want you here. What a joy it is to come together as a family of God uh, and uh, not be an outsider. In other words, uh, I know you have, I have. I've been to people's homes that when I went there the first time, I felt like I was a part. They just was so welcoming and so uh, great that we were there. I love it. It's like going home and your mother, you know, she loves you. Nobody else might like you, but she loves you. Well, be assured that God so loved this world. Why else would he come? You go places that you're wanted, and so I am so glad you're here. Uh, It's delighted to see people that could stay home. Uh, There's lots of things. You can eat biscuits and gravy and tenderloin and bacon and orange juice and and just apples, fried apples with, man, we're hungry right even now thinking about it. (laughs) But I'm so glad you're here. It's just a joy. Some of you I've met for the first time at church, and it's an encouragement to me and just seeing people uh, come together uh, with different backgrounds different things that their life has consisted of with experiences. But here we are to talk about the one event that changed the whole world. God visited us. 
I love that. Well, this aspect, if you look on your bulletin, it says welcome and invocation. The welcome is about us. We're here, and, and I'm glad you're here. Um, you know, it, it's, just, it's just great to be among God's people and people seeking God, and some are. And then we're here, and the invocation is we're now saying, Lord, thank you for inviting us to this place. Thank you for that. Uh, you want us to be with you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says God seeks worshipers, seeking worshipers. God wanting something to be worshipped, not because he is a narcissist, but because he knows through that worship we become really who we're meant to be. We're made in the image of God. All of us are, whether we're saved or lost, we bear that image. And I know there's some good children, and I know there's some wayward children, and I know there's some marginal children. I understand that. But nonetheless, we are creatures created by God. You're special. Father, thank you for being the kind of God that would invite us to your house, would want us to worship you. And Father, just to think that you are uh, among our midst, that you sent the Holy Spirit here to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us. He's even called the Comforter. And Father, you know we need comfort. Not only the comfort of just life, but the comfort of mind, to know that everything is right between us. There's no drama. There's no unspoken words. So, Father, join us this morning. We invite you in. We invoke you in here that you might enjoy our songs to you, our worship to you, our dependence on you, and then we will fellowship one with another, brothers and sisters, fellowshipping wonderfully. Father, bless your church at Citrus Ridge, please. In Christ's name we ask these blessings. Amen. Pam? All right, there's a song that I know that you have been in church when the roll is called up yonder. You know, this is a wonderful song of the church. It's, it's meant to be encouraging. And I want you to sing it that way with your hearts this morning. Those of you who would like to stand, please stand and join with me. There are three verses. We'll sing all three verses.
singing this morning. Would you remain standing as we repeat the Apostles' Creed? Yes, if you have your hymnals, it's in the back page of your hymnal. And uh, I would ask you, uh, church, what is it that we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. By the way, you can get a lot of things wrong here and be right. Uh, I was on the wrong page. I thought, I thought you'd lost your marbles. Just re- <laughs> but I was on the wrong page. So anyway, that happens. By the way, you've never lost your marbles that I know of. No. All right. Uh, lots of things we can pray about in our park. Uh, needs, physical needs, uh, true. Uh, we're having a memorial service today. Those people that have suffered really uh, the loss of a loved one, which is uh, tragic. Uh, it's just not right. Uh, we're made eternal. We're not made to die, but we do die. And we'll see a little bit about that. But just understanding uh, that we all need help. We all need hope. People can't live without satisfaction, hope, uh, understanding, knowing who they are, uh, where they're going. And so uh, we're just the kind of people that need God in our life. And it does make a difference. Um, So this morning as we think about the prayers of the people, uh, there's some on here. I think there always is. Let's see if I missed the page there. Yeah. Uh, Keith, I know Keith. is. How's Keith doing? You know? Okay. What a woman. I love her. Yeah. She takes care of him. Then Phyllis, my neighbor, uh, she is a little bit immobile. I understand she's having family come in this week or so. I talked to her yesterday and she does have family. All right. Uh, Doris Nichols that's on here also, she's recovering. We last week. She's better. I went to see her yesterday. All right. Yeah, she's fine too. And Anna, uh, Anna Williams, is she? Goodness. I hate that C word, I do. Uh, David and Betty Kersey, they are also uh, Dixie, um, Tony Pierce, I see one, how they're doing, or, uh, of course, Margaret Fowler, we know uh, she needs our prayers, Addie, the 13-year-old, the uh, family of Don Elliott, uh, I know Becky's here this morning with a daughter. Becky, thank you. Uh, That's such a hard thing to go through. Changes in your life. Goodness gracious. Anyway, it's encouraging to... We we do encourage each other as we see people go through. Matter of fact, Corinthians talks about how we encourage people is because we've been through those valleys too. And we encourage those. God takes us through and gives us wisdom to help other people. So we'll all experience that. I, I, I don't long for the one day my wife will leave me or I'll leave her. I know that. And so I'm not prepared for it either. It's just a, a strange thing, but people come around you and help. Uh, Ukrainian and Russian people, of course, they're victims of aggression and suppression. Um, those who are ill, suffering from grief and natural disaster victims as well as those who need emotional support. 
And I have some of those people in my family that are struggling mentally, even to stay sane. Some of them we would think are insane and somewhat true they are. They just can't think right. So um, any other prayer request that's just new to us? Uh, I know we mentioned one this morning. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Mary, Mary Lou's sister passed away. And she had been in hospice. Uh, what a wonderful lady she is. Uh, we need to pray for that. I see you sitting back. There you go. Mary Lou, I'm sorry about your sister. And I knew you were, um, she was your baby sister. Is that right? That's what I remember. And that's, di that's difficult. So remember her in your prayers. Any others that I've missed? Yes. Becky okay okay then let's go to the Lord in prayer father thank you for allowing us to bring our petitions to you uh, you have told us to do that you've told us that we can come right into the throne room right into where you uh, reign uh, where you and your son sit reigning upon us uh, wonderfully and graciously you've told us we can come in there and we can just bring our petitions to you father what a joy that is to know that this morning we've named Becky, uh, some of us that's lost husbands, lost sisters, uh, some that have friends suffering with cancer, uh, family members are suffering and trying to get everything in a, in a position for, for just comfort. Father, uh, we will never outgrow the need to petition you, uh, to pray in our petitions to you, to show that we are dependent upon you because we are. Uh, we are not self-sufficient. Uh, we are not able to pull our own selves up by our own bootstraps. We can't do that. And, Father, just to see us humbly come before you. And, Father, we know that you love a humble heart. Uh, what a joy it is to know that it's not the strong that you come to save. It's not the strong you come to lift up, but it's the weak. It's the marginalized. It's those that everyone's rejected, those that see there's no hope for them be it a maniac in a garden or a lady that's been rejected by all of her friends and she comes to the well by herself alone because everyone hates her. But not you. Not you. Father, what a joy it is to know that. I pray that you bless your church today with comfort, with peace, with hope. Uh, and Father, that we might be that same thing to other people around us. So Father, we pray that. And even when our disciples ask you how to pray, and you told them, as we as a congregation prays this way, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, let's see. I get out my directions here. Oh, yeah. Guys, it's time for the tithes and offerings. I'm sorry. Come on, fellers. That's the Tennessee coming out of me. Fellers, come on up here.
Father, thank you for the graciousness of your people. The people that want to be a part of a ministry that, Father, worships you, that's concerned about our neighbors, that our church here is concerned about our community and help in the ways that we can. Father, bless your church. Bless your people. Prosper them. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy. Because, Father, we so love worshiping you. Now be with us today. Thank you for these gracious gifts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, fellas. How nice. Thanks, guys. We're in Acts chapter 1. Um, just... <clears throat> I'm, exci I'm so excited about this subject of the kingdom of God. Um, it, this entitled kingdom is a part because uh, the, our kingdoms are a part, and we'll see that uh, as it goes on. But in uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, in the first book he says, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now this is from the book of Luke because he was writing this um, also in the book of Luke. This is later. Until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them. Now, can you imagine? They didn't believe that. <laughs> they didn't believe he was alive. The women told him, but they didn't believe the women. You know, we still got that problem today. We just don't believe nothing they say. <laughs> but he, he's, they did say, we've seen him. And they thought they had, he had seen a ghost or something. Because, by the way, people then, like people today, resurrections really just don't happen. Uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, didn't believe. A lot of people don't believe in the miraculous. But anyway, uh, he presented a lot to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, and speaking about the subject we're going to be talking about, the kingdom of God. Now, this is from the aspect of Luke's gospel. When he told about this, he's retelling Theophilus the second time. He wants to put a, an account in the place that Theophilus can understand. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. To wait, wait there. As I told you, I can't stand to wait. Uh, but he said, wait there. But to wait for the promise of the Father, and God promised something. Uh, which he said, you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, and by the way, 500 years had expired. There was not a prophet on the scene for 500 years until John the Baptist. And you can read the story of how he came up to be a prophet and what his father, it was just an amazing story. But John's on the scene preaching out in the wilderness and congregations are going out to see and hear him because he is a different kind of guy. And he's got power and people are being converted. He's baptizing them there in the Jordan. Uh, but, he will bab but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, we'll see this when you get to Acts 2, which we're not there today. But uh, Peter spoke. Uh, Peter, a, a, a quitter, somebody that just left Jesus. And he spoke at Pentecost. 5,000 people changed their minds about who Jesus was and were saved. Now, it wasn't Peter that did that. I worry sometimes I come down and I think, Lord, what can I say to convince these people about who you are? And the fact of the matter is, I can't, but he can. Power come upon him. He said, um, so when they come together, they ask him, Lord, will you at this time, they're concerned about time, restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, Israel had a kingdom, as you remember. And uh, they had a kingdom. You know why they had one? Because they got tired of God ruling them. They wouldn't, didn't want that. They wanted a kingdom like the world had. They wanted people to go out and fight their battles for them. And so Samuel said, they've rejected me. And God says, no, Samuel, they've not rejected you. They've rejected me. And so God gave them a king. Now, if they'd have waited, they'd have got a good king. No, they wanted one now. Give me a king now. And so there they are. And by the way, they hadn't been a kingdom too long until they'd been divided. Does that sound familiar? 
I don't care who's at the White House. We're going to be divided. We've got to hate somebody. We're just destined to do that. But anyway, it says, so will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That was your question. And immediately God just says to him, you've missed the whole point. You're asking the wrong question. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. And by the way, that should be comforting to us. God is not concerned today about America or any nation in this world. He has a plan that he's bringing to fruition. Don't worry about that. He's going to tell them something else. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, why would God say that? Because when Christ came on the scene, you think about this. He was born as an infant. And just as his ministry started, he started doing things that nobody had ever seen that was done before. He was raising the dead, healing the sick, touching lepers and cleansing them, causing people's ears to open, their eyes to open. Nothing had ever been seen about that. But when he came on the scene, he says that, that power, when the Holy Spirit come on, you will, receive, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Now, I'll show you just in a second. The death, burial, life, and what Jesus has done, his resurrection pointed to this, not to a consummation we'll see in a second, to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. I want you to tell this story of the good news of the gospel just like God did. Now, I can tell you this. The church today in America is so confused. We want to take care of Washington. We want to get prayer back in schools. We want to hang the Ten Commandments on the walls. We don't want a Muslim leading our nation. Uh, Obama was a Muslim. Ah, we're in trouble. Can I tell you, please don't look at those things that way. He says, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth that hadn't happened, but he, it happening now. So I'm going to give you power, not the kind of power you're thinking about. I'm going to give you power to do this. Put the next slide up there, Pam. That one we, that, by the way, Pam and Jeff is the reason for this slide right here. I love these people. Anytime you open Scripture up, no matter what section of Scripture you're talking about, it'll be about one of these five categories. There was the creation God created. Now, today we have people says, well, no, that's not even possible. That's a new concept. That, that hasn't been around but about 200 years. Nobody ever thought there was not a creation by a God, even if you get the God wrong. Then the fall occurred. That's when they got kicked out of the garden. And then in this fall here, God had told them, he says, here's what I'm going to do. They were scared to death. They hid themselves and sewed fig leaves together because they were afraid of God because what had happened was the day you eat of this fruit is the day you die. And Satan had said, you got it a little wrong there. <laughs> he knows the day you eat it, your eyes will be open, and you'll see as he sees, you'll be like God. <laughs> Nobody wants to be told what to do. I have family members that say, don't you dare tell me what to do. Uh, I have a brother-in-law that he leaves a store, and they say to him, have a nice day. And he says, I'll have any kind of day I want to have. Don't you tell me what kind of day to have. But the fall occurred, and Jesus comes on the scene, and he shocks them. He, he tells them, really, the beginning of 3.15 in Genesis, the hint of the gospel. I'm going to do something, God says, that puts enmity between you and Satan. That will bring you back into relationship with me. I'm going to do that. But they don't know how. By the way, it's strange. <laughs> when, when Eve has a child, Cain, she says, I've got a man from God, even Hebrew, even Jehovah. The promised one. They thought that was the one. But it was going to come from Eve. She was all wrong about that, as she will find out soon. But the fall comes... And all of a sudden, this redemption right here is promised. Now, open your Bible up. You're going to either read about creation, a fall, a redemption, a restoration, or a consummation. Now, these words are here. We know what creation is. We know what the fall is. 
Redemption is to restore, to actually buy back. Uh, you lost your house, and uh, now uh, they've re repossessed it. Well, you've got a redeemer, uh, a, a rich uncle, and he goes to the bank, and he buys that house back and says, here it is. It's free. God's buying back, redeeming us from the curse of the, of the fall. Now, there's coming a restoration when you do this. He's going to make all things right. Do you feel uh, marginalized? Do you feel like you've been done wrong? Don't worry about it. God's going to make it right. Somehow, he's going to, he's going to restore everything. He's going to restore this created earth. Now, he says the first time he destroyed it with water, the next time he'll destroy it with fire, ever how that is. He's going to restore it better than it was the first time. Because the second, the second times it can't fall back into sin. But anyway, then he's going to restore it. And then the consummation is this. The consummation is when everything comes together. That's what the disciples were asking. Will you now at this time consummate everything for, the, for Israel? <laughs> they want to know about the future. I remember being in church years ago, the whole church community was concerned about eschatology. What's going to happen in the future? And so we had these people get up and tell about Russia, China, uh, America. <laughs> they lost their marbles. We don't know about that. Uh, matter of fact, God, God will take care. There will be, there will be a consummation when he, when he completes everything. That is to, that is to make it complete consummate it like a marriage when you marry you have a consummation that's the union of two people sexually coming together in union that's a consummation that's when two become one I guess that's one of the reasons that God says you shouldn't do adultery you shouldn't do fornicate because you're you're producing something that was never meant to be produced you're, you're doing something without you're going here without any of this Matter of fact, people even deny this. They deny the fall. Uh, many deny creation. But people want to be happy. They want to be complete. Uh, so they, they look for this, this consummation, so to make it right. Now, that is, I just want you to understand the trajectory where Scripture's pointing. So when you read a text, you'll know it's going to be talking about one of these five items here, always. Because God has a plan in place for bringing about this ending. Now, let me say this. <clears throat> Eschatology is just a study of future things. And I can help you understand it a little bit by talking about politics. Sometime in the future, in November, we're going to elect another president, or maybe the same one, or somebody, or a woman. I don't know who it'll be. We're going to put somebody there in election, and... Uh, and then we'll have the election there. But they don't immediately start serving. There's a time frame of when they're elected president to the inaugurational day. And, and by the way, the prior president, you know what he's called during that time period between those two periods? A lame duck. Why is he called a lame duck? Huh? Well, he knows it's ending. He doesn't have support, and he knows it ends. Oh, that's so good. He doesn't have support, and he knows it ending. So what he does, he goes in, and he starts getting favors out, pardoning people, doing things he couldn't do when he was in office before the election took place. Well, this is the same thing here. God put Christ on the throne of this new creation, and he is elected. He's the elect one. There's coming a consummation on inaugural day when he will actually physically serve this world. Physically. In the meantime, it's where we live. We live between here and here. Now. We live in a kingdom that's, as Jesus says, my kingdom's not of this world. What world's he talking about? He's talking about this world. But here we are. And you know what his disciples want to know? 
Are you now at this time going to bring the consummation and restore the kingdom of Israel? He says, fellas, you're asking the wrong question. By the way, what he's going to do is he's going to empower these men, and by the way, us that are Christians, to be witnesses to this kingdom that is now, uh, in theology, it's called it's called the already, but not yet. We're already in the kingdom. Jesus said this, the kingdom is here. Matter of fact, they thought this. I grew up believing this. Preachers taught this. In the future, somehow, God's going to send a man back for, like Elijah. And Elijah's going to come, and he's going to be in this earth, and he's going to be preaching and proclaiming the resurrected Elijah. And that'll be the start of a seven years of, what's it called? Tribulation. And, and they'll finally kill him and hang him, or they'll do something to him. He'll lay dead in the streets. But Jesus said this. He said, you know, John the Baptist is Elijah. Now, this is Jesus' words. You've got to trust him now. If you can believe it, John the Baptist is Elijah. He's the forerunner of this new creation, this new redemption, not of the consummation, but of Christ. Everything, Jesus said this to the Pharisees, everything in the Old Testament, they didn't have the New Testament, everything in the Old Testament was written about me. <laughs> I'm sure they heard that and they thought, we really do have an idiot on our hands here. But it was true. It was true. And by the way, you can be offended because of Jesus' words. You can be offended because of Jesus' works. John the Baptist was in jail. and He sent two of his buddies down there and said, Go see if he's the right one or should we serve another? Because it wouldn't work out the way John thought it should work out. He was thinking about when the true Christ comes, this will happen. Consummation. And it wasn't happening. And he was confused. I know why he would be confused. But Jesus came, and he came to do a brand new creation called the second creation or redemption. That's why it says in Corinthians, you are, you are a new creation created in Christ. He's the beginning. Now, why is this important? If we can understand just this concept in the church, we quit worrying about what happens that we can see. We should be concerned about things. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but don't worry about it. We serve a sovereign God that's sovereign. He has come. He has redeemed us. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. If you're sitting here this morning and you just cussed your neighbor out Friday because they really needed cussing, can I assure you that God's mind hasn't changed about you that are putting your trust in this man? Can, can, can I tell you that? That's true. Now, you should quit cussing. I understand that. And quit kicking cats and quit, quit you know, lambasting Washington and Walmart. <laughs> Stay off their case. I... I but here he is, he's come. So the, the point is that I want to make is, let, let, me, let me just read you a, a song that was written by John Lennon. It says it all to me. Uh, <clears throat> he said, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living just for today, just living for today. Imagine there, he says, there's no countries. It isn't too hard. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion, too. Can you imagine just, there's no religion, there's no countries to die for. He says, imagine all the people living life in peace. By the way, who don't want peace? Who don't want peace? You may say I'm a dreamer. Uh, you may say I'm the only one. But he said, I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us in the world and be as one. He says, I, 
By the way, it, it, th th this is Buddhism in, in full-blown colors. By the way, I think America today lives more like Buddhists than they do Christians. And I, he said, imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can, no need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Now, this is what John Lennon wanted. But you may say I'm a dreamer. You may say I'm the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. What he wants is this. He wants this consummation here. He wants everything to be made right. Who don't? But can I tell you something? You'll never get there except through this. Never. It's impossible. You can't get there in politics. You can't get there in mental telepathy. You can't get there anyway. So the, the book of Acts, and if you read your book, Bible, as a start, it says the, the Acts of the Apostles. What's, what Luke is trying to tell Theopolis was that, Theopolis, everything God came to do and to complete is being done now by his apostles. He's continuing to do what he did when he was here. That's why God said, and Jesus says, go back to Jerusalem and wait for the power of God, and you are my witnesses. Now, not everybody's going to believe this message. I, I know it here at, at Citrus Ridge, people are not going to come to church. They're not interested in church. People come here to church. Well, I went this Sunday. I didn't get nothing out of it. I'll go, I, I, I just don't get it all. It takes this, it takes the power of God to open my eyes, my ears, my understanding to this. Now, unless God visits us with conviction, with repentance, and with trusting His words, we'll never get there. Never. We live in a kingdom, yes. We're also living in another kingdom. That's here now, whether you believe it or whether you don't. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus himself said it. And so live that way, he says. The disciples wanted restoration and consummation. Uh, they, they wanted all the future promises now. Uh, Luke 4 says this. He went to his hometown after he had been uh, in, the will, in the wilderness and temptations. And he had done many miracles. And when he run, returned to Nazareth, as the scripture says, and this is in Luke 4, you can read for yourself. When he came to Nazareth, he said he went to church as his custom was. And he sits down and they come to him and they give him the scroll. You know, they, give, they want many, many Bibles. The, the Old Testament scroll. He stands up, unrolls the scrolls to Isaiah 61. And he, and he says to, he said, all these things that Isaiah 61 read go, comes, he said, these things have come to completion today. This is t true. He said, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, okay, okay. Physician, he's going. They're going to say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. And he tells them two stories. One, he tells them about a leper in Syria named Naaman. And he says this, there was many lepers in Israel, many. But God went to one in Syria, Naaman. Oh, by the way, he says, there was many widows in that land that day. But God sent his prophet to Zarephath, which was the city of a pagan king, and healed a widow woman there. So he didn't go to Israel. There was many widows in Israel. There was many lepers in Israel, but God went to foreign places that you hate and healed those two people. And here's what the people did. They hated him. They looked for a way to kill him. They would have because they didn't like that. The only people that ever come through redemption are humble people broken people rejected people dead people people that can't walk people that can't see god came to seek and to save that which was lost now i want to read you this time i'm sorry about time 
I never can get finished. But I want to read you this verse you know very well because from memory you know John 3.16. I understand that, but I'm not reading John 3.16. I want to read you what John 3.17 says. It says, <clears throat> For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. <clears throat> By the way, we are in this same position. If I had time, I'd tell you about from Scripture. He didn't send God here to condemn the world. The world's condemned already. But listen to what he did. But in order that the world might be saved through him. You know, when I see people downtown carrying signs that say, I hate homosexuals, I hate lesbians, I hate Muslims, you're going straight to hell, I think to myself, these people don't understand this. My followers used to say this, you get more flies with honey than you do vinegar. And I can tell you this, if you're sitting here today, strangely, thinking you're out of place, can I tell you you're in just the right place? This God is not like the kings you know. This God is not like those ogres that just want you for what you've got. This God is long-suffering, gracious, not willing that any should perish. And there is a coming of consummation. There is. But right now, he tells his disciples, guys, shh, cool your jets a minute. I'm going to empower you to be my witnesses to the gospel, the good news. I don't worry about this stuff right here. This will happen and this will happen. Right here's where we are. So if you got a loved one that's deceased, if they're a Christian, can I tell you something? They're going to be part of this. If they're not, they're not going to be a part of this. I can't convince even myself enough that these things are so vitally important it would solve a lot of our divisions in america if we just if the church even understood this but they don't they're all about power a majority money prestige people with uh pe pe people that have influence influential people big people Large people, powerful people, strong natural leader type people. That's what we need. No, we don't. We need Christ. Everything else will be fine. And in the meantime, you know, I thought about this. Can you imagine if God visited Citrus Ridge and let the power of God settle on us? What a witness we could be here I've got people that I love here in this community that want nothing to do with the church because the church has been nothing but an ugly to them. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Ugly. But not Jesus. Matter of fact, when Jesus met with these people, they looked at him and said, well, well, Lord, you don't want to touch that leper. Lord, you don't want to talk to that harlot. Lord, you don't want these children bothering you. Not Jesus. And by the way, 1 John says, as he is, so are we in this world. Man, that's good news. Father, I pray that you bless your church. Father, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Uh, let this mind be in you, us, which was also in you. And let us not be conformed to this world let us not be conformed to this world but let us be transformed how by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is the acceptable means of worship father please bless your church please bless this citrus ridge people that are here this morning Father, give us the desire to know these things in, in much more detail, which, Father, you're willing, we will do that. Bless us, I pray. In Christ's name, I 
ask. Amen. Well, we got a song? Good. That's a good word, Pastor. You know, all Jesus says is, I want you to know me. I want you to know me. And because we know him, we have hope. Because he lives, we can live forever in eternity with him. This is a beautiful song, Because He Lives. And I know many of you know this, and it's dear to your hearts. We'll sing all three verses. If you would, stand with me, please. Yes. Mm-hmm. 